Hello, Legion. This is Hadrian. Thank you for being here. Let's play some more Civilization 6. Not 5. 6. <laughs> I'm going to have to say that at the beginning of every video for the next couple of episodes, just, just to get it out of my system. It feels so good to say that on the channel. But this is our Russian Sunrise series. And I, in between this recording and the last one that you watched, I've actually played Civ 6 a lot. <laughs> So I do want to start with just a few quick commentaries before we jump in here. I'm not going to like talk about the state of the game. The whole purpose of the series is to show it to you. But first of all, quick tip for those of you who are playing Civ 6 for the first time and you're just as frustrated as the rest of us that tool tips take as long to pop up over just basic terrain as they do. For instance, just pointing at that takes a solid second and a half, two seconds there. If you want to be able to look at the tooltips more quickly, hold down shift. Now watch what happens. See, there's some instant tooltips if you want to see information on whatever you're pointing at more quickly. You can also alter the game files, which I have looked into doing, but I haven't done myself yet. You can also add WASD, as I was mentioning in the opening episode as the basic camera control as opposed to the arrow keys. I'm used to dragging for now. The other thing that I will say is I have realized that the pacing in Civ 6 is fundamentally slower, especially towards the late game, than in Civ 5. I'm not going to go into a tremendous amount of detail, but I will I will tell you I have played online mode with the I played with the new speed mode. I haven't played online online. I've played with the online speed. I've played quick, and of course I've played this on standard. I can tell you, and I've played marathon too. Standard plays like epic in Civ 5. Quick plays roughly like standard, and online plays roughly like quick. So if you're thinking, man, online seems like it might just be way too fast. It's actually very much your speed if you're looking for a quick game of Civ 6, the way you would expect a quick game in Civ 5 to go. So anyway, I've been talking for two minutes. I want to go ahead and go into our episode here. But those are just some of my thoughts after having played a little bit more. And you will see this kind of come into effect as we go deeper into the series. So I've got my settler making its way on this like arduous journey down to this spot in the tundra. Also, I had a question come up about the base yields of the tundra. So we're going to have a look at that and see. All right, so tundra's base yields looks like it's just one food. It's not showing the bonus that I would get as Russia right now. So the question, the reason that that question came up is, of course, Russia gets some nice bonuses. Let's have a look at this. Extra territory upon founding cities. And then, of course, of course, I still can't talk. Plus one faith and plus one production from Tundra. So we're going to see those come into effect once we actually have territory. Those yield icons will change. But for those of you curious what the base yields were for Tundra, that is the answer. So we're not going to get as much food settling in that territory. And as a matter of fact, it might benefit us to settle like kind of... Hang on, let me let me turn off this lens. Oh wait, no, it's not a lens. I've just got the settler selected. It might benefit us benefit us to settle like right in here, maybe close enough to the coast to where we can make this a coastal city. But just something to think about. Don't think we have anything to do this turn. Let's go ahead. Oh wait, 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 wait. Hi there. Hi there. How's it going? You need to leave me alone. Thanks. We're going to send you up this way, too. See if we can get that barbarian to bugger off. Next turn. Turn 61. I'm very happy with the game so far, though. It's different if you're an experienced Civ player. I guess this is my first time experiencing this. Longtime fans of Civ have gone through this multiple times. Uh, I had Civ 4, but I didn't really get into Civ until Civ 5. And I played just hours upon hours upon hours of Civ 5. And here's the thing. Having done that, I am finding adjusting to 6 difficult. It's not that 6 uh, is a bad game. It's the, it's the first release of the game, so there's going to be some changes. Of course, there'll be expansions down the road. But, um, yeah. <laughs> there's, there's a lot to adjust to. I, I can definitely say that. Okay, we found our friend the... Uh, the scout. I'm not going to be able to fire on him, I don't think, 
No, that's gonna that used up all my movement points, but we're gonna chase him down, see if we can get to him. Speaking of adjustments, I did also tweak the audio after the first couple of episodes because I know that it wasn't quite right, especially with that first episode. You couldn't hear Sean Bean talking. So now the sound should be a lot more audible. I've done some testing and my voice should be louder than everything you're hearing. This is going to be the standard for audio going forward in Civ Civ 6 content on my channel. Holy crap, words. So do me a favor and just let me know in the comments uh, how How's it sound? Uh, is, the, is the music good? I want the music to be audible. It's amazing. But also, is the uh, are the sound effects good? Are, are they uh, are they audible? And yet, can you hear me above them to where it's not distracting? So just let me know, and I would appreciate it. Okay, so I'm not sure where this encampment is that he's running to, but we're gonna we're gonna try and get to him. All right, good. We can get him in zone and control. He won't be able to run as far that way. That's all well and good. Meanwhile, the settlers are on the way down. I wish, I wish, I wish, I wish I could see how far. Okay, China, are you doing what I think you're doing? Because that's not cool. China has got an army here. This is disconcerting, and they're kind of sort of moving towards me, maybe. Spearman, you're going to be hanging out with my Thousands new city. I'm just saying. Lived without love. Not one. Without water. So there's an example of how Sean Bean sounds now. So let me know how the audio settings are, because I definitely could use some some feedback just to help tweak it, make sure it's as I want it going forward. So anyway, enough technical stuff. Let's play. So we just finished up irrigation, which gives us plantations. So the ability to improve plantation type improvements. And that would be uh, that would be nothing right now. We don't have any plantation type improvements in our borders. Uh, but also we have the ability to build the Hanging Gardens. We're, of course, building Stonehenge in St. Petersburg right now. One of my favorite, favorite things about Civ Six. Look at this. There is an individual build stage for practically every single turn. We'll come back and look at Stone Stonehenge again. <laughs> Sooner or later, my words will catch up to me and I'll be fine. Um, <laughs> so we're going to come back and look at this next turn so you can see how it's progressed. But there is an individual... I really feel like they really broke up the building of each wonder. And of course, there's an animation that plays. We've all seen them on, on Civ 6's YouTube channel. So of course, you can you can tell they definitely put a lot of stages into the building of them. But to see it actually go into stages as the turns progress is just so cool. Okay, so we have several choices. I'd rather just look at them this way. No, we don't have a we don't have a boost toward anything. I kind of want to move towards ironworking because I feel like we're going to be at war with China sooner than later. Also, though, we're going to have a coastal city pretty soon, and I would like to move towards celestial navigation. That's not as important as ironworking, though. I've, and then what's the boost for that? Building an iron mine? How can you build an iron mine if, if you don't know where the iron is? Maybe just build a mine. No, because we've already built one. We, we would have that boost. Interesting. So I don't know if we'll be able to safely boost that. Improve two sea resources. Yeah, that's not going to happen. Let's just go for iron. Or do we need horseback riding? Huh. All right. Yeah, I'm going to go for... Ironworking, and then maybe for horseback riding next. It would appear we found some barbarians. There's their encampment, so we're gonna start doing some damage to them and letting our units get some experience. Oh, you know what? I'm gonna turn off yield icons. That's that's kind of uh, yield icons. That's kind of distracting. Also, here's what it looks like without the grid. I like to have the grid on just because it gives the game a bit more of that board gamey feel, and I think that's important. Um, I mean, you don't have to have it on. It's just a visual thing. A lot of times I'll play without it, but it just helps you see the individual moves um, much more simply. All right, so our settler is making their way down. This, this city is going to be founded this turn. So help me God, it will be founded this turn. Okay. Oh, wow. So the Barbarians tried to charge my warrior, which was a mistake. All right, let's, uh, where do we want to go here? See, now I can hold down shift and I, I know that I can see the exact. All right, those are hills. So let's move on top of the hills. I want to be able to see things. 
There we go. And let's move you here so that you can do this. Hey, guys. Surprise. Okay, this should do it for this camp. Bye bye Combat animations are awesome. And yes, by the way, I do have the day-night cycle turned on. Hopefully you like it. I really, really do. I've been playing with it in all of my playthroughs. I don't find it distracting. It is a bit of an adjustment because obviously it's not always the same looking map, but it really just helps you keep engaged with the game. I'm really impressed with it. So we're nine turns away from early Empire. Seven turns away from Stonehenge. Oh yeah, let's take... See? See, see, see? <laughs> there, there's a new stage. It's just so cool to me. Like, I love this change in Civ 6. The ability to see the wonders building up so neatly. All right, let's go ahead and knock these guys out of the game. Uh, that actually didn't finish them off. All right. Gonna stay on the hilltops for a second. And then we're gonna come down from the hilltops. Jakarta. All right. Someone has already met Jakarta because we didn't get a bonus from that. That's unfortunate. Let's go ahead and just fortify these units, because both of these units are in our zone of control, and I don't think, or fortify this unit. Both of these barbarian units are in our zone of control, and so I don't think they're going to run. I think they're going to try and challenge me. Uh, and with this unit fortified, I should be able to withstand most damage, uh, even, even from the fully healed unit. Okay, yeah, they're going to just run like the cowards they are. So we've uncovered a decent amount of the continent by now. All right, there's that. Let's go ahead and take care of these slingers. Good night. All right, so those guys are done. So speaking of the speed settings, uh, based on my experience, unless they make a tweak in like a, a week one or week two patch, which I doubt they will, it's kind of a major change. Um, so barring something unexpected like that, I will. Ima I would imagine that my Civ 6 content going forward on the channel after this series will be played on quick, possibly even on online for some series, if, if there's one that I deliberately want to do uh, a faster game. So stay tuned for some more updates on that. Also, I might play on smaller maps because I'm finding that uh, playing on a small mass map as opposed to a standard um, still gives you a lot of room um, and yet makes things a bit more interesting, I feel. All right, so we've knocked out that camp. We're really just chasing off the last couple of barbarians. This isn't really necessary to chase to chase them down. I kind of want to bring my units back, so we're going to do that. If, if the other barbarians decide they want to harass me, then so be it. Okay, I just fortified them. I got to make sure to come back to them because for some reason, I don't know if it's... Oh, wait, hang on. Just kidding, I didn't just fortify them. This scout's gonna die now. Bye-bye. <laughs> All right. Yeah, I, as I was saying, for some reason, it, it seems a little bit easier just to lose track of units that you have fortified in Civ 6. I could just be batty. I could be making things up. But it just, it seems that way. Hey, our settler has arrived. So once again, let's just take a look at this situation here. This is, all right, breathtaking appeal. So this is definitely the place where we want appeal-wise. Let's, let's pull up the lens again so you can see what's going on here. These are the appealing tiles nearby. Let's hold down shift so we can see things more easily. God, I'm so glad I found that tip. That's very, very useful. So that's definitely the Beth, Beth, best, best, best uh, tile to settle on there. But also settler map mode shows you where you're going to get extra water. So this is a... It's hard to tell on the tundra, but this is a freshwater tile because it's on the river. And, but it's also... We don't get the we don't get both bonuses, which you would think we would. Um, actually, I'm going to check that because we might get both because we're on the coast and we're on the river. That's worth looking at. But we are ready to found this city, so let's do it. Kazan has been founded. And no, by the way, you cannot rename your cities yet. It's weird. 
I'm, I'm, it's really throwing me. I hope they change it. You can't rename. It's especially frustrating when you can't rename cities that you've conquered. Like if, if I'm trying to Romanize, if I'm playing as the Roman Empire and I want to Romanize my territory that I've conquered, I can't. Uh, so it's kind of off-putting, but what can you do? So we got a lot of territory to start off with because we are Russia. Now let's have another look at those yield econ. Econs? Why do I keep saying that? Icons. There we go. So we get production and faith for every single econ. <laughs> on the map. Is there a hotkey for that? It's not Y anymore. The hotkey for the grid is still G. That's interesting. When I do it this way, the checkbox doesn't go away. Anyway, we're going to turn those off. And for our first construction here, I do want to go ahead and build a monument, but I also would like to see if I can make a purchase, please, game. Yes, I can. Builder. Come help me out. Let's get this city started. And we're going to have this spearman just fortify down there. Meanwhile, we're going to bring these units back. And go to the next turn. Turn 68. So we're now border buddies with, with Amsterdam. Our borders, of course, are not solid yet. They will be once we've researched early empires. Because we will be able to say that, hey, we we are a def we are a defined territory. You have to have permission to enter our borders. Thank you very much. So St. Petersburg is done. Oh no, someone beat us to the wonder. Ah, oh, we were close to that too. I feel like I hadn't looked at it in a few turns, but oh, that's the worst. All right. Well, in that case, um, I want the granary. But, hang on, let's let's have a look at the city details. Population's happy right now, we're getting a nice growth bonus because things are good, so... And then housing-wise, how are we doing on housing? Six housing for four citizens. Population growth rate is normal. I'm gonna go for the library first, because I want the tech boost sooner. So the library has just started building, as you can see, it's not complete yet, uh, in the campus district. Now we've got this builder ready to go. Now, this is a tundra tile, so you can't actually build farm on tundra. You're just going to have to come up here. Hey! Bom dia. É uma honra conhecê-lo pessoalmente. Parece que mentes brilhantes se atraem. Well, thank you. That's very kind of you. So this is Pedro, the second of Brazil. It is an honor to meet you, Pedro. <laughs> Let us exchange diplomatic courtesies. Tell me of your capital and I will tell you of mine. Exchanging information on our capitals is a great idea. It should help promote trade. Okay, so he knows where my capital is and I know where his is. Where is it? Ooh, it's right there. That's not far at all. And he was the one that... Ooh, you jerk. You're just rubbing it in my face. He was the one that got Stonehenge. So that's good to know. Thanks, jerk. Appreciate that. And keep moving this way. As soon as we can get on top of that hill, we're going to uncover a good amount of land in that direction. Hmm. Will you receive our diplomatic delegation? Your delegation is most welcome. We're going to play it friendly with Rio, not so much with China. That sound means that... Hang on. First of all, let's go here, because we need to get that improved. Yep, there is an, there's a barbarian encampment that just formed right near our city here. So I'm going to go ahead and do a little preemptive management. Whenever you hear that noise, the game doesn't give you a notification, but look around. Stay sharp. Keep your head in the swivel, because barbarians have just showed up near your borders. Right now, it's just a hint that the game gives you. You have to know what it means. You have to listen for it and react to it. Because, again, there's no notification, which which is kind of cool. I don't know if that's a mistake or if they'll keep it that way or what, but that's that's the way it is right now. All right, we're going to fortify that unit till healed. We're going to bring this guy back down as well. And uh, we're going to go to the next turn. I'm so mad that he beat us to Stonehenge. Hey! Let me tell you something right now. Do yourselves a favor 
and go look up the Civ 6 dev diary or or a dev journal, whatever it was. The, the, it's on the Civ 6 website uh, for when they revealed Gilgamesh. It is so funny. Just take my word for it. Go read it. You'll laugh really hard. It describes Gilgamesh as a as a character and how his civilization works in six. So it's an honor to meet you. Let's exchange information on capitals as well. So Uruk is all the way up there. I've actually conquered Gilgamesh a couple of times in my early playthroughs of Civ Six. And let me tell you, when you when you kill him, when you finish off the Sumerians, you will feel genuinely bad if you have anything of a soul whatsoever. His seeing this mighty man admit defeat and just just it's it is sad when you kill off Gilgamesh. It makes you feel things and you don't know why. All right, so let's go ahead and fortify there just in case some barbarians decide to come in and we're going to build our pasture. Yay! Knowledge of horseback riding has advanced considerably, which is perfect because we're six turns away from being done with iron working. Also one turn away from early empire. So these borders are about to all get solid. The delegation of Gilgamesh brings you gifts of Sumerian jewelry and liars from Ur. Will you accept them into your city? Your delegation is most welcome. Not a problem at all. So the Chinese appear to have already, already researched early empire because their borders are solid. Same with Pedro. Past, with its changing empires that rule. Okay. I, I want to keep that for the barbarians. One thing I will say, though, if you're a new six player, do not underestimate the advantage of doubling recon experience early on using the survey mechanic because or the survey policy. Because they get experience boosts every time they pick up a goodie hut or engage in combat, whatever you might get experience for. And having leveled scouts is a lot more effective in six than it was in five. And that ability was never there in five. So just something for you to know. 50% production towards settlers. Hmm. We already have a pantheon, don't we? Don't we? Yeah, religious settlements. Let's... Border expansion rate is 15% higher. That's right. Had to double check. So... Yeah, we're gonna... We're gonna make some changes here. I would rather have extra production towards settlers right now. So this means that basically we build them not twice as fast, but we get half of the production towards settlers. So they'll be built essentially in, again, not half the time, but three quarters of the time. 100% production towards settlers would be twice as fast. So if, if I'm doing my math correctly, I could I could be completely wrong here. I'm tired, but I think... It'll be done in roughly three quarters of the time. So yes, our apology agenda. Policy agenda. I'm sorry, guys. I'm normally better at keeping my words together than this. All right, we're definitely going to research political philosophy because this is going to give us access to the first three levels of government, autocracy, oligarchy, and classical republic. And we have a boost hoarded already. As you can see, our borders are nice and solid now. All right. Uh, can I possibly purchase? Nope, not just yet. A little bit too far away. All right, so this scout, I want you to go up there. So this scout's actually very near Uruk. That's how we found them. All right, I'm just going to have the... Oh, oh yeah, this the, the builder needs to come out into the water. There's a couple of sources of crabs nearby. That's awesome. All right. Okay, so it looks like a spearman here. So it's, it's going to be spearman on spearman. That's not the best, but we'll make do. These guys are fortifying until healed. Let's go to the next turn. Oh, hey. So they want open borders, and they're actually going to give me extra gold to make it happen. I'm going to say no. Because the computer can definitely backstab you. Like they couldn't in Civ Five. You can have units sneak into your territory 
during an open borders treaty, and then the civilization can declare war and the units don't get kicked out of your territory anymore. Now, I'm only saying that based on one experience I had, so I could be wrong, but that is my initial observation, which is scary as crap. <laughs> All right, so we always like to stay on top of the hilltops with the scouts. Let's go ahead and have some initial combat before we wrap the episode here. Give this barbarian encampment a hard time. They're a little bit too close to comfort. Too close for comfort? To Kazan. That's what I was going to say. Also, I'm going to need a new builder here as soon as this library is done, so we're going to work on that as well. But we are at the 25 minute mark, so I will go ahead and cut this episode here. The next one, we are going to work, like I said, on that builder. We really need to have more food productivity in the St. Saint Peters Saint Petersburg area. Also, in the next episode, hopefully I will have learned to use the English language again, which would be nice. But also down here in Kazan, we're not going to be able to farm the tundra tiles, but we're going to get food and production from all of them. So this city should still build up relatively quickly once the pop starts to climb above this initial one. And having the crabs as a bonus resource, let's have a look at the yields again so you can see the econs. <laughs> so this is going to give us gold and food. Um, which is quite nice. So we do get food yields from the tundra, but we can't build farms to improve the food yields. So it's not like we're not getting any food whatsoever, but having some citizens out here working these tiles will definitely help. So we're going to work on that. Thanks very much for watching. If you enjoyed the episode, don't forget to like the video and subscribe to follow along. If you're not subbed already, I upload new episodes in Russian Sunrise every day at noon Eastern Daylight Time, which is GMT minus four, almost GMT minus five again, because we're going to switch off of daylight savings time pretty soon. Uh, for those of you not in the States, it's GMT minus four. And comments are always welcome. We are going to be playing a lot of Civ 6 content in this time slot uh, for the next month or two or possibly three, depending on how well things go and how well it's received and how the game ultimately is in this first iteration before any expansions. But I remain really excited about it, despite, um, you know, some of some of the experiences I've had. Not ooh, now I sound really, really ominous. Um, definitely the game is. Uh, remember when Civ five first came out, uh, there was a lot of backlash because the game was not quite complete and it got a lot better with expansions i never experienced that because i didn't really get into five until the expansions were out but based on what i've seen civ 6 is doing better at launch than five did at launch that being said there are still things that need polish that need work and you will see them later in this series unless they release a patch while the series is going but that's just those are just some initial thoughts. I don't mean to be negative whatsoever. So again, thanks very much for watching. Again, comments are welcome. Let me know what you think, and I'll see you next episode.